Wholeness family, I trust everybody as well. We're going to get started here in just a quick moment. We are correcting some issues with the stream that uh, YouTube is reporting. So we're just going to take a moment to see if we can clear up those issues. Thank you for your patience. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started here. It looks like um, the issue is fixing itself. I'm going to let it breathe a little bit. I want to let everybody know that it's uh, another time for us to connect. This is, of course, the Secret Energy Podcast. This is episode two. We're here to get into that rapid fire question answer session. And also in respect of all the new users, those who are just coming in, those who are just coming into also our offerings and honorings and even into themselves, this is an important time to connect. So let me go ahead and raise some volume up here. I always laugh because this is the exact same system we used <laughs> when we turned off last time. And every time I come in, it's always something new with YouTube. So I always hear people talk about that, so I won't feel singled out. I guess when there's thousands of uh, streams going at the same time and lots of connections happening on the technological level, it becomes a bit to manage. So let's see here. Ah, all right, so I'm going to just take a moment also to take some breaths. I'm going to get at the main page here. Pause the connection. Yeah, and just center myself and um, welcome you to center yourself also into the space. And to just be mindful of the moment. Thanks for the acknowledgement that the sound is coming through clear. All right, so we can smooth on into this. It's always great when everything starts working right away, but, you know, life even has trouble doing that, so we can't actually hold the computers to doing that. So what we mean by honoring the ancestors is, of course, paying attention and bringing gratitude to self. All is self. The ancestors and all the connections that we share are all a part of our existence. And we observe this space because within our memories and within our DNA is everything that we need. We also want to take time to dial into the space. And what I do is, is I feel that there is a specific resonance that is coming across this planetary system because we're observing these seven days of the week. We're using these clocks and we're using these calendars and that's a specific kind of energy. So it's important to take a moment to observe those energies that are coming across in order to dial ourselves in. 
And we'll first start off with the number one. That is, of course, the number for Sunday. But first, I guess, give an observance to the zero. The zero should not even be mentioned. It is a placeholder. It's called a cipher. It is across the portal. When you go through the zero, as you see it as a whole, you come into the, di the dimension, if you may, that everything is all collected and connected. And just giving reverence to the zero, but as this matrix begins, it starts with one, which is Sunday, which is a synthesis. It is a reminder that we first come into this space with everything, that we truly need no thing or nothing, and that this everything is synthesized in the Sunday or the number one. It's not unpacked yet. It is just like a seed in seed form. And as we think of that, we come to the awareness that there's nobody to blame. There's nobody to place judgment on but ourselves because we're connected with everything and we contain all the power. And then we move to the next number, which is two. Two is symbolic of the moon and is the number of the moon. It brings us all dualities or all divisions. It breaks down the components and it allows us to begin to process just as our mother, when we're in the room, she will eat food that as children we cannot consume. It is too large, it's too rough for us, but she will consume that and she will break it down into liquids and into nutrients. So that way we can begin to grow from the small parts first, bite sizes, if you may. And that is, of course, the explanation of why the dimension that we're seeing now is also in division, why people feel separate, why the things that you see going on around you is almost as if people are not aware of the highest truth, which is that everything is indeed connected. But that's because they're, you and everybody else are seeing reflections of self. I am a reflection of you. And these reflections allow us to see bite by bite and piece by piece what we're capable of doing good or bad, and how all that's going to turn out. So we all are examples for each other in this process with us breaking down the infinite into something that is comprehensible. And that is the purpose of the number two. That is the purpose of even duality and breaking things that are together apart. Also, a quick note for those who wonder why this will be going on. It's because also in this process, in the synthesis, in the Sunday, you have everything, but you're not aware of it. It's all still packed up. And even for it to come across the portal, as we talked about with the zero, even for it to come across the portal, it must be packed up. It must be in a small synthesized form, just as we don't see adults being born out of the womb. So, too, you don't see the final development of the being arriving into the envelope or into this space. You see the synthesizer, or the seed version. And so we also know that if you're given something, even as a child, if you're given wealth, if you're given honor, if you're given glory, riches, power, it will be normal to you. So you won't even know what it is. You won't even know what its use is. So just like if you give a child things from the time that they're born, they'll just expect that those things are always a part of their existence and they won't even know really how to use those things. It's only when you remove them and you take them through the lessons of learning why they have that power and how to use it, do they become aware of it. So that is the only example you need of why all this stuff is going on in this reality. That's why this dial-in and these numbers are perfect and they're also exhibited in the days of the week because they lend insight to deep knowledge and answer the deepest questions like why we're, why are we here and why are these things going on around us? And as we move from the number two, we go to the number nine, which is a symbolic of our, our day Tuesday, which is also Mars. This is our protection. As you see, Mars is an anagram for the word arms. You use your arms even in war. The arms are the weapons. Even in fighting, you generally are fighting with your hands or your arms or protecting with your hands and your arms. And this is because when something is broken down, it is now going to take time for comprehension. 
meaning that all your curriculum and all your studies are all broken down versions of what it is that it's trying to teach you or what it is that you are to learn. So let's just think about that. When you take a course, they don't just give you the certificate at the end. They give you all of these lessons to break down what it is that you need to learn. But that's going to take time. That's why there's a year, two years, 12 years. There's different sessions of time that are necessary for you to come into a certain level of mastery. And in this case, you're coming into a mastery of self. So it's going to take time. So it's important since in time, many things transpire to have protection, to have a hedge or garden, like in your womb, in the mother's womb, the amniotic fluid, her stomach, and even her wherewithal, her aura, all of that protects us. So just like in this planetary system that we're in right now, we have a protective envelope around us. And this is to give us the time and the opportunity to grow, just like a garden, it needs the time and the opportunity to grow. If you keep plucking it up and planting it again, the seed will never develop. So that's why we see this sequence one, two, nine, and then we move on from nine to five, which actually gives us our day of the week, Wednesday. Wednesday is synonymous with mercury or thought or thought. And what this is about is, is that now that you've begin to process these small bite-sized chunks of infinity, you now begin to learn language, comprehension, and all the things necessary to build what is called a matrix, to explore a matrix. This is why Thoth has always been symbolic to the going and the coming and the messaging, the knowledge and the information, all of what is knowledge and wisdom. This is all of what you get as the bite-sized morsels are starting to make sense. And then we move on from the Wednesday or the number five to the number three, which gives us Thursday, also known as Jupiter or Guru, who is seen as being large, corresponds with the thighs and the fat. And this is because as you begin your speaking and your talking and your creations, it gets larger, just like you see the world now and all the different things that we've created it creates more things inside of this envelope. And that must be held as it's growing. And that's what that number is symbolic for. And it's also symbolic for finding mastery. Also finding joy in the creation. Being joyous, jovial, jubilant. These are all words that are cognates of once you begin to realize many things and you become larger in that respect. You also must find the joy in that. That is true mastery. That is being the guru. Because we know that sometimes when knowledge is revealed to you, it brings sadness. Sometimes the more you figure out, it seems the more that you become disenchanted with the projection. But truly the master finds the happiness in it as we grow larger in this awareness. And in order to keep that fundating component alive, in order to keep it brewing, to keep it mixing, you must have the passion. And that brings us to the next number, which is six, which gives us Friday, which corresponds to Venus. And if you see that energy of wealth, luxury, happiness, all of those things all correspond with having the passion to continuously go through these projections and continuously reproduce over and over again and to be excited about that. That's the orgasmic feeling. And then as we close, we move to the number eight, which is Saturn or Saturday. This is the rule in itself. It is the boundary of the projection, lest it spill over. It gives us the time and the patience that it takes to develop things that will take time. It gives us the soberness and the sternness to make the right decisions in what we're experiencing as we go into adepthood. And that is the sequence. One, two, nine. Five, three, six, eight. 
which when adding them all up equals 34, and 3 plus 4 equals 7, and that is the seven days of the week. And so that's how we dial it in, you know, just giving the time and the space for everything to breathe. That is what we do when we're honoring our ancestors. We're honoring the sequence of creation and life. Make no mistakes, there are probably other matrices that function with those same number sequences in different orders and produce different things. But to dial into this space, that's the sequence that you're looking for. So without further ado, there's questions to be answered. And that's what we're came, we came here to do today. We have about one hour, so that means we'll have a hard stop at 1045 since we did get started a bit late. And we'll see as many, uh, see about how many questions we can get answered today. Also, we're going to have a giveaway. We're going to give away a bottle of monatomics, and we're going to give away a season, <laughs> a semester of the university, whether that's one or two, that'll be of your choosing. And today we also have Nightbot, which has been working, as you see it there. It's going to do the giveaway for us, so we'll be able to do the share screen so you'll see who won. And I wanted to also congratulate those who won last week. We gave out some She Legit and we gave out a course in the university. And that was awesome. So we want to make sure that we keep this going. Also, there's some major updates going on at Secret Energy. As you know, we're building a brand new platform or we built a brand, brand new platform. It's, we're still adding things to it as we come online, uh, bringing in a GeoChat Messenger next and really creating and and co-creating, I would say, the world's first conscious ecosystem, the real one. Not one just in mock-ups, not one just uh, still in funding, or just in the mind or as a concept, but something that is actually there. And we're bringing it online in a way that it can exceed even the technical abilities of the modern social media platforms. And that's very important to us because personally, I feel like the big game that's being played here is this information, 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 which is great, but application is necessary. I always say that information is the door. Application is when you walk through. And for us all, we need to walk through more. We need to see more of those applications being built based on the knowledge that we received. It's not just enough to be intelligent and to say intelligent things. I can put you in the paint with some of the most dynamic people such as Daniel Winter and many as uh, Pierre Sabak, you know, and uh, El Amin, you know, different brothers and sisters that have mastered areas of their life and their existence. And I've also had plenty of actions also to show for that. So we want to even honor those elders by continuously taking the knowledge that we receive and building something with it. Let there become something physical. We need more well, we need at least one. When I say more, there's not even one online school of consciousness for children. Not one. We have millions of dollars going around in some of these outfits claiming to be conscious, which is just a term and doesn't designate anything besides just being awake. And there is still yet one of those, and it's because we're spending a lot of time in the knowledge and the wisdom even, but less time, almost no time in the application. And that is by design, this reality has now been configured in many ways by the opportunists that are involved in it to not wanna see others shine. It's as simple as that. It goes on everywhere. I just talked about it in this recent podcast. You have people that don't want you to know as much as they know you go to the job, you have those who don't want you to take their position, so they suppress you. And even in business, you have many that will try to sideline your projects or creations because they want their projects and creations to be the highest. And this is the environment that we're living in. So what we decided to do was we decided to create something that allows us to co-create to actually bring something alive, and it's still in a process, but to bring something alive that allows us all to actually work together and to also see the mutual benefits and that when one of us is shining, it's actually making all of us brighter rather than making us dimmer 
or taking attention from the whole. And so that's the design and that's the intention and that's the projection. Now I'm going to jump right into the questions because we had some questions that were left over from last week. Also, I would advise, especially with the questions, because we do get a lot of questions in, in our help desk. Uh, this is, of course, on the site. We have support, and so there's questions there, but we always have to email back those who send questions there because we can't answer all those questions. To either tune into the show, ask your question there, check out some of the older videos, or check out the help docs, or check out Real Search. But so we have lots of places to answer questions. It's just it can't happen in support all the time. But some of those questions that come across, I'm always looking at those questions and say, well, these, these are the kind of questions that we need over on the podcast. Because it's like sometimes when you're asked to ask a question, you actually type the question that you are not, is not the one that you were really thinking about even last night. So if you're going to ask questions, which you need to preface your question with question, that way the moderators can see it. I Meaning if you have a question, type question first, colon, then ask your question. And think about your question. Think about what you really want to know. Think about current things that are even happening. Sometimes the questions are like, they're way out there. What is the difference between the conscious and the subconscious soul on level five of the matrix? And it's like, okay, how is that answering what you need to know right now on the physical ground? And it's interesting, you know, because sometimes we're taught to be present, which is great. We're also taught to reflect on the past, which is amazing. But almost the future seems to be like a taboo. When people start talking about the future, like, oh, man, stay here, stay present, or think about your lessons that you've learned. But truly, the future is the only space until you get way up there with your manifestation powers and abilities of travel. The future is actually the only space that you can really control now. So... For you, the future is the most powerful thing. For the matrix and the occultists, the future is the most powerful thing because it's what you can begin shaping and molding now. So I encourage everybody on the line to work with shaping and molding your future and ask the questions that are related to doing that properly and giving you the power and the tools needed to carve into such spaces. So this first question today is, how do we overcome fear of living your true purpose? All the mental conflict and the negative thought frequencies that pull on you, right? I'm going to turn on my background here. I got some uh, ocean, some of our oceanography, ocean ancestors floating around. I got a star system there, and that's just to dial us into that the ocean is also space. And even also when I talk about out there, paradoxically, I really mean in here, the depths going deep into self, that's deep space. That's the subconscious. So this question is about, I actually skip one, but I'll go back to it. How do we overcome fear of living your true purpose? All the mental conflict and the negative thought frequencies that pull at you. OK, and what we're talking about today is we I want to be action driven. I want to actually instead of just saying, oh, you do that by and just becoming a talking head. I'm going to show you some examples of why, if you follow what I'm saying to do, why it will work. OK, so just give me a quick minute. I'm opening up something. I'm actually going to show you me opening it up. That way, you know exactly how to get to it and how to do it. All right. OK, so what you're looking at here is you're looking at a screen share of. Secret Energy 4.0, which is a new website. And right here, you'll see this tab. For menu, so I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to click on this called Cosmic Energy, click on that. And where it's going to take me to is it's going to take me to a page that gives me all of the correspondences of the energy that is moving through the day. I am answering the question here, but I'm going to answer it for this person if they listen once and for all, especially when it comes to conquering fears 
dealing with mental conflicts, and specifically frequencies, because that's what was mentioned, frequencies that pull on you. Now, what we know when we study frequencies is we know that two of the same frequencies cancel each other out, right? So we speak on frequency a lot, and we speak on that everything has a frequency, but we also have to come to the awareness and the soundness that two frequencies still do cancel each other out. So this is why this chart that I'm showing you has so much power because everything that is bringing you a discomfort or is taking you into a zone that you do not want to be in throws, is throwing you off balance. And so to obtain balance, you must follow the laws of balance. The laws of balance are already in play. How do you know that? because there's a cosmos. You don't see really the planets smashing into each other often. There's this level of balance that is being maintained out there, and there's a system of balance that is always in play, and it, and it stretches all the way into the deepest spaces. So that means Earth actually abides by this same system. Now, whether we abide by it or not with this free choice that we have at times to choose different things, we do have it. I know somebody was saying the other day, we don't have free choice. And that's just a prayer. Well, you don't have it. <laughs> but our parents, they gave it to us. Now, if you gave it away to somebody else, like your thoughts, that may be something totally different. But specifically, we do have choice. We actually can dial in frequencies and vibrations. And those are our choices. Those are our tools. How we think, what we say, those are our choices. Those are our tools. So let's just highlight very briefly here, we're on Sunday. And what is necessary is it's necessary for, especially the neophyte and the initiate studying to become an adept, follow the correspondences of the energy that is coming across for the day. Now, it is also very difficult to find these correspondences, meaning that there's a lot of information out there over the years, hundreds of years, even Agrippa's work is in itself charts of correspondences of energies, but it's so off, so wild. It's as if somebody was attempting to confuse everyone about these correspondences because they're the most powerful things. And the reason why I'm taking a little bit of time in answering this question because I'm actually just going to refer to this question when I have to look at some other ones and say, hey, follow th what I said on the first question and when I answered that first question. Because... All the solutions to all of the problems that humanity has is contained here within these days of the week of resonance. And it's because what the law state is that for every single energetic form, there is a clipolt or a shadow. And what this shadow is, is let's say, for instance, you have a shadow because there's parts of you that you don't know about. We call that what's still in the darkness. And when you overshadow someone or influence, notice that you can be bought under a planet's influence. But since every person is a celestial body, you can be bought under the influence of someone else's energy. So too different objects and items that correspond to those planetary or celestial bodies can also bring a certain level of influence over you. And this is known about. This is the whole of occultism. I know that some would want to see more, but you see nothing until you master this system. Every single day, being able to pop this off like you do your favorite rap song or your favorite song that you love. You're able to pop off all the lyrics because you've been listening to it all the time and you're able to repeat everything about it. But now it's time for us to be mature. It's time for us to reach adepthood. And that's by taking the time to actually learn the correspondences of the energy that comes across today in order to lock into the synchronicity of the cosmos. And once you do that, you will be able to see everything around you and be able to determine the ma'at or the math or the numbers, which are archetypes that are associated with the energy that is around you. And then when knowing that you, when you're doing something that is not going to be favorable at a certain time or you're going to be exposed to an energy that is going to throw you off balance, you are then able to use the opposing 
matching force, meaning that you're able to nullify the shadow side of that energy by being in alignment with the awareness of even having the right gym on that deflects that energy. And again, because all this is energy, when you wear course, the corresponding things to certain energies, you attract those energies. When you also wear the corresponding energies that deflect certain things, you nullify those energies. So for instance, let's say if you went into the courtroom, okay, the court is all Saturnalian, it's all the order, it's all the rule. And that's sometimes what people confuse about the occultism and the whole Saturn side of things. Saturn being the most malefic planet, meaning Saturn will kill you. It is a martial planet just like Mars, so it will go to war with you. This is all a part of the matrix. So instead of being this starry-eyed pacifist, which we've seen over thousands of years, have never propelled the society in the direction that it should go, Instead of doing that, you become a master magus and learn that actually to deflect the what you would say is shadow side of Saturn, it only takes to wear the blue sapphire. So when you're walking into court, you would have the best chances of getting across what you need to get across. Now, some look at magic as something they want to abuse, like, oh, yeah, so now I'm going to go do something bad and then I'm going to go and then use this ring and get out of the trouble, that's neophyte stuff. <laughs> that, that's, not, that's actually going to probably even work even worse with those kind of intentions because our intentions are the strongest force. And then you're able to utilize these energies when you're in alignment, when you're in order, when the cosmos is on and, and in your side, I'll just say it like that. When the cosmos is in your side or in your favor, you're able to then resonate properly and then you're able to get things done. You're moving with the force of the cosmos. But that's how important this is. And while in life now we have so much information that's out there, this is really the only information that is really important first, especially for anyone just beginning this, because then all your fears would be removed or would lesson because you were around the energies that fortify you and actually give you the balance in the areas that you're vulnerable. So when you're feeling a fear, it's because you have a hole or a leak somewhere. So these are the electrochemical and the frequency based correspondences that are necessary for correcting those imbalances. Now, these imbalances are always going to take place. This is not uh, me harping on you and saying, oh, you're doing it the wrong way. These imbalances are going to take place because let's say, what is balance? Balance is keeping what you have in balance. So if you throw a new, a new package on, my, on me, I need to balance that new package. If you throw more energy on me, I need to balance that new energy. If I come into another energy field, I got to balance that energy field. I call this the ma'at matician, the ones that are the connoisseurs of life that are actually looking to maintain balance at all times. Because when you have a lot of power and you come out of balance with it, you destroy things. So really the worst thing is to come out of balance. So you're always looking to find balance. That's why they show you the, the mayat weighing the heart against the feather and all this. It's all about balance. But to maintain that balance, especially when you're constantly coming into different energetic fields, you're learning new things. So now that's been added to your energetic body. And all of that now needs to be balanced. So if you're rolling with the cosmos, and you understand the energies in there when they're coming across. You know when you're coming out of balance. You know when you're on perfect balance. You know how to tip your scales with other different things. So that's what this is truly about. That's what it is to be adept. That is what it is to be an occultist or a magus. So I've answered that question. So now I'm going to move to the next question. Or the first one. It says, what can we take to recollect our dreams better? Or recall our dreams, pieces of our dreams Write my dreams so I work on keeping track, but recollecting more is an issue, okay? Same answer. Notice today, and you know, this is how we always do. We work to synthesize everything that we've bought so far. It's not about, again, impressing you with new things, you know, because there's nothing really new under the sun. It's about revisiting 
some of the things that we've already gone through. And because I constantly synthesize and perfect things, that's why we have the Cosmic Energy Calendar to just be there for everyone to, even if you don't want to tune into these shows, you don't even really like me and you don't need to know about all the stuff that I'm talking about. This is what you, what you came here for. This is what you're looking for. You're looking for these correspondences and we're not trying to hold that back from you or put a paywall there and you know, you got to pay for it or any of that. We're just giving that to you. Now, of course, this is a mentorship. So having the information is great. You can grow abundantly from it, but you're probably going to need tribe and you're probably going to need a family to begin to connect. And to also, because each of us hold one of these archetypes as our primary, and many of us have actually moved through many of these archetypes, we're capable of showing you by example, the energy of the archetype. So when you're around people that resonate certain energies, you're able to confirm to yourself that, wow, that, that is that number five energy. And also you're able to go into spaces and, and bring all types of levels of solutions because you also know how to work with energies. Okay. So when a person is talking about dream recall and, and how to be uh, tuned into their dreams, there's also the herbal connection to this. And I'm going to show that very briefly that there are things that are going on biologically with the body that don't allow sometimes for, let's say, the organs, the ventricles, the nerves, even parts of the brain to be nourished properly in order to actually power, not only power up the dream, but allow you to maintain contact and lucidity within that dream state. So I'm going to show you one of the herbal solutions for that. And so we're going to travel over here. And what I've done now and I, is I've gone to, and I'm just showing you again why we place these resources here. Now I've gone to store.secretenergy.com, which of course is the store. And I'm going over here to Elixirs, which I just clicked on. And where we're going to go to in Elixirs is we're going to go to this Lucid Dream formula, which is down here. You see this Lucid Dream kit. I'm going to go to that and we're going to take a look and we're going to see the things inside of this kit very briefly that propel lucid dreaming. Let's see if I can get an ingredient chart here. I may have to pull that up elsewhere, but we have some Palo Santo to clear the space. That's also important. Why? Because there are energies all over the place. The whole thing is full of energy. So sometimes the recall could just be, Energies are too many energies in the space that are causing, a, a, let's say, a hyper disturbance. This is like they're distracting you. Right. And so that is less attention on the dream and more attention on the energies moving and the feelings moving through the space. So Palo Santo, big time OG, clears the space. Right. And then we have the elixirs, which have their ingredients that fill up the alchemical cabinet of the things that are needed in order for you to get into the proper level of relaxation for dream recall, right? Because there's a certain level of being relaxed that you have to have to be able to get into these spaces. Let me turn me on in here. Bam. Okay. So it's being relaxed, right? And then again, like I said, there are herbs that help fuel certain parts of the consciousness to be able to get into these spaces. Now, I know some may argue and say, well, you know, I could do this by myself. Or There's always something external, but truly you're not doing anything by yourself. And the reality is, is that if you need some assistance, you don't even have to think about the whole financial side of it. Well, I can't afford that. All you have to do is set your intentions and say, this is what I need to actually repair myself on this level to be able to achieve this goal. And then you will get what is necessary for you to be able to go forward and do that. So this is very important is to realize that anything that you especially spiritually seek to intend and intend on doing, all you have to do is place your intentions there. Like, I really want to do this and just watch how things open up. And if it was a lucid dream kit that you decided that you needed or the dream elixir, you'd be surprised. The next day somebody say, hey, man, you need I got this hundred dollars that I owe you. And that's where it comes in at. It's like, okay, well, let me go get this lucid dream kit because the future you can control, 
The future you can mold, you can shape. And that's what all this knowledge and power is really about. That's all. That's why many people keep looking for answers and looking for answers, but they found the answer already. And then they sometimes see it and they thought, oh, that's too simple. I'm going to keep going and I got because it, it's got to be more complex than that. It's not. It's really about learning these laws and getting them down pat, as they say, getting them to where you can spout it off like your times tables. You know all your times tables, right? Nine times nine, four times two. You know all of those things by heart because in school, most of the time they made you write all those down. You write them on the board. You write them 100 times. This is something that if you invest your time into, we're talking about the cosmic energy calendar, if you invest your time into doing that, then it will actually pay off for you. Okay, so the next question here is, how can I easily, which is already a mm, easily, <laughs> the easy route, I didn't find really anything that survived down that path, but I'll go on. How can I easily transmute undesirable emotions from experiences and prevent prevent other versions of myself to project onto me, okay? Now, I won't be redundant and say, hey, the cosmic energy calendar, even though big solution, I'll also speak towards that when someone is projecting something onto you, okay? Like, so let's say, for instance, if you're just in an office building, we won't say in a direct engagement, but in an office building and you work there and you get in there and you start f hearing chatter in your mind, or start feeling a way that you know is not really connected to your personal, your personal feelings and how you felt even that morning. So you know empathically, because as we're increasing more, becoming aware more, we're becoming more empathic. So that means we're picking up on others' emotions and the subtle energies that are going through the environment, right? So uh, many times we ask for this. Pretty much everybody watching this is asking for a variant, at least, of being more empathic, being able to know what goes on and see beyond the veil. That's all a part of being empathic. But then there's an immediate complaint. Once that empathic ability unlocks, whether it's through a cleanse or a fast and a meditation, and one starts to actually gain that ability, there's a complaint, oh, man, it's too much. I feel these beings projecting on me. And all this stuff is like, it's too much, right? This is the same thing also that when you start cleaning out your body, even cigarette smokes just is like, oh my goodness, I'm getting a headache. But before you may be able to even sit in the smoke room at the airport. <laughs> you, know, it, you know, now, you know, you get a headache when you eat a little bit of salt that's ionized and not sea salt. But before you were eating Doritos and Cheetos and Popeye sandwiches and never bother you. What is happening? And it's because what you're doing with your body when you're leveling up is you're becoming more sensitive, literally. But the issue, of course, with sensitivity is that it equates to sometimes a vulnerability. That's why some of the masters even say they've tapped into that side of vulnerability and understood what that really is. It's opening up the empathic side of things so much that even things reveal themselves to you that it would edgewise not have done so because they see you in a vulnerable state. It's actually a technique. I even know some animals that lay around in a vulnerable position to attract other animals that think that that animal is vulnerable only to seize it once it gets really close. So vulnerability is also a technique or power or a trait. But of course, if you can't shut it off or if you can't use it and then learn how to, to tune it off, it's almost like, let's say, Superman in one of the movies He's got all these different senses. He can hear, he can see, he can, all this kind of stuff. But when getting on earth, just overwhelm. All the five senses are overwhelmed. The train sounds and all the, the perfumes and the cigars and the hot dogs and all this stuff is all floating to the, through the air at one time. And it's overwhelmed. So the first thing the Superman has to learn is how to actually turn those, uh, inner, th those um, powers down and only use them when necessary. So always remember that, that while you're going into these cleanses and all these different things, make sure that you have your tool set configured properly to where you can actually turn down your empathy if necessary. This is why even the malefic numbers, which there's a malefic, they're malefic, what they call malefic planets. This is means like they're the set of the yin, they're the yang. And many see the negative side of things as actually being non-useful and things they want to get rid of, something they want to get rid of. 
But actually, those are the forces that allow you, just like acid and alkaline. If something is too alkaline, I'm too sensitive. I'm, I'm reading everything and I, I'm picking up on too much. Well, pour some acid on it. And acid are the things that you can, uh, um, to, you can do in your everyday life that actually dial back your frequency. I know that sounds crazy because, you know, people are just polarized on this. Raise my frequency. Raise my alkaline. Well, my alkaline on 20. You know, you'll be in there dead with your teeth disintegrated with high, high, high alkaline for too long. Like your stomach acids and all that kind of stuff will just be depleted. You won't be able to digest food. Your bones will become soft. All this is a response to high, high alkaline. You're looking to be balanced. So always remember this. This is chemistry. This is my at thematics. And because of that, it's all about maintaining balance and staying away from the extremes, except for when needing to use that. Like if somebody just drops out in front of you and is sick and sick, now you need to go to the extreme of the yin pole to pull energy to heal that person. But to stay on the extreme yin pole in every day of life, you're going to be crying. You're going to feel vulnerable. You're going to feel like nobody loves you. Nobody's paying attention to what's going on. Nobody cares about earth. You're going to feel all of that. So you also need that yang component. Go out and have some fun with your friends. Go watch a damn movie. Tune it down a little bit. Remember, what the magus is doing is, is aware of all of this. So it's not like the action like, oh, yeah, I want to go and party. It may be I need to go and party to tune down some of this high vibration because I don't actually need to be in that stage right now. And I know that that's crazy to say. I know some people are thinking like, what does that, how? And it's true. It's really about balance here. It's not about high vibration or low vibration. It's about balance and being able to access those poles when necessary. So I'll keep going with this. So just remember how you transmute those frequencies is, of course, using the, the correspondences to how to nullify those frequencies. And then also remembering the environment. Do the math already before you go in there. I know I'm going into the office. Judy jokes too much. Paul is totally unconscious. So this is obviously not midnight meditation that you're going into. This is something totally different. So get your wardrobe on. That's why there's war in front of it, because now there's going to be a conflict of frequencies when you go into spaces and you wear these accoutrements, you know, have some lavender in your pocket, have some have have the stone on, have the stone on your finger. Right. Have the things that are needed to actually balance out the energies that you're about to go into. That's the adept. The adept knows what's going to go in there and doesn't imagine that, oh, my frequency is so high. It's just going to change everything around me. But that would change the entire workspace and that would probably the, your job would be gone and all of that would be gone. So it's just instead of trying to change all the time things that you can't change, work with the things that you actually can and also get with the powerful forces that have the ability to do that. And that's why nature is so powerful. That's why you see like even a simple smell can spread through the entire office. And sometimes even only the sensitive people can even smell it. You see what I mean? So there's ways to reprogram and do things that don't actually require you to just directly get into a conflict with somebody and to start telling them what you know and all of that. OK, so the next question here is I use negative energies to feed I used negative energies to feed a root chakra, pulling it from my crown as it boiled up. I then fed it, I fed it to the root, instant Kundalini traveling up the spine. Is there a name for that method? I don't know. I don't know the name of it, <laughs> personally. Uh, whatever you have going on with your energy centers. Um, let me clarify this because I think that what the person is saying is I, I use negative energies to feed my root, feed a root chakra. OK, I would assume that meant my root chakra. OK, these questions are a little fractured, so we want to try to clean them up as best as possible. But let's just talk about what we know about when we're feeding these energies in our body, like how we bring up energy. And just specifically to this, using negative energy to feed the root chakra, let's just Talk about what that's really about, because I talked about this before, and it's like when you get scared all of a sudden, let's say something wild happens and your heart goes into this crazy beat. It's almost like a flutter. 
it's a mixture of anxiety, a mixture of desperation, and, and then the fear and the adrenals, more importantly, all those fluids from the spine now pump into different parts, especially of, of, of different parts of the body, different parts of the energy center. And if you take a moment instead of, let's say, just reacting to breathe that in, you'll find that while it could take 50 even a hundred breaths to reach a certain state that you would be able to reach that same state within one breath by utilizing that energy, which is perceived as negative because all the fluids from the spine are all present at that time. And then you're making the intention to actually put that energy to work. Okay. So I'm assuming that that's what the person is talking about. And the person is saying it's an instant Kundalini traveling up the spine. This is also what I feel when I do that. Because every time it happens, it could be you could see someone fall and immediately you're like, oh, my goodness. And then I and you feel this heartbeat or maybe somebody swerves into your lane and you miss them. And, you know, maybe you got some weed in the car and you're about to drive up and the police roadblock is there. There's so many situations where you get into this and you even feel your tongue. like Your tongue starts getting like a metallic feeling. Right. And then the heart starts beating kind of like irregularly. If you breathe that up, that's actually a, a very powerful force. It's like a pneumatic, in this case, uh, the pneuma, like a gas. It's a pneumatic force that can immediately be used. And some actually practice techniques to do this because obviously there are dangerous jobs that you need to become. Some don't even really are practicing this for, for like a spiritual benefit. They just learn how to do this because that's the way that they cope with their job. Even the other day, I had to take a trip to the hospital and the question was, you know, how do people even, you know, do the surgery on another person? You know, if somebody's, you know, bleeding over there screaming, you know, how are you the calm person in there, you know, sewing up the wound and, and making the person calm? Like, think about those abilities because a lot of times everything just gets as well, is that person conscious or not? Are they, are they awake? And, and really... Even when they come to a certain level of understanding that themselves, what's conscious, they'll, or what's super conscious, that's the real term, they'll realize that, yo, I've been doing that all the time. Every time that I get into a situation and everybody else's energy is imbalanced, which I deal with a lot, of, a lot at my job as, a, as a, a nurse or a doctor, I breathe in the energy, I remain calm, and I go to work. And in this case, we're talking about breathing in that energy bringing it into the energy center and actually using it rather than letting it go to waste. I don't know the name of it though. <laughs> the next question is, should we eat turmeric? I heard it helps opening our third eye, but it is growing underground. Okay. I found that there is quite a few medical properties in turmeric. I think the list goes on and on and on. Um, whether it's used exclusively to open the third eye, I guess, you know, that will be your research that assists with that. I know that things such as uh, cilantro, anything that softens the pineal gland, lots of greens, et cetera, assist with um, not so much as I would say opening the third eye, but actually preparing the third eye to open. You see what I mean? Because when we're saying opening the third eye, sometimes you know, maybe the, the organs and the faculties that are inside of our body, we get confused. So when open, the third eye opens, you're able to immediately begin to see what's beyond this particular veil. Versus when other olfactory, thymus, pituitaries, etc., begin to get healed, they give you that empathic side. They actually give you the ability to read into things d deeper. They give you the ability to see and to feel have greater levels of intentions, etc. So this stuff doesn't just work on that exclusive, let's open my third eye. These herbs and these elements, especially if you, you visit the Ayurveda and the Tibetan medicine and see their explanations of what they do, that could be another avenue that you can go and research things more. Um, so I'm not sure exactly if that was a question per se, but yeah, I would eat as much as that stuff as possible, not overkill, obviously, but that will help you uh, bring your body into balance. So the next question here is when I meditate at night, I see black, then I see purple, and then I see two colors begin to move in a way like a Warshock test. Do you have an explanation for this? And I noticed that a lot of these questions have a tendency to be very personal, meaning that we sometimes want others to label things for us, but 
these things are our own unique gifts and powers. So rather than even trying to name it, it's more of exploring the use and going through your own private sessions of seeing what the use is of what it's going, what's going on. Start doing your own, okay, this night it, it happened. I ate this, the, the, uh, the design changed. So those are like the clinical trials, if you may, that you have to run on yourself. And don't always look for a name for any of this, but the clinical trials that you run on yourself to explore what these things do. I have stuff that goes on right now that I still have yet to really find necessarily a use for. I know something's happening. I feel a certain way or I see certain things, but I don't necessarily have a use for it. But there are also things that started off that way. And then I started doing my own clinical trials on it, like marking down when it happened. If it happens all the time, starting to see uh, what would occur if I put, you put a blindfold on. Is it clear? So you can know if it comes from the third eye or the mind's eye. Uh, that's why dreams are clear when you cover your eyes. We've talked about this a lot. Like when you cover this area with something before you go to sleep, everything will be clearer. Because this getting hit with lights disturbs the ability for you to see through that same lens that you're using to peer into the quantum space. So it's just, you know, getting names for this stuff and especially when it's exclusive to you may be difficult. Uh, the explanation, getting explanations for it, especially when it's exclusive to you, one of your own powers and abilities, um, there may be no explanation for it. Your duty in life could be to bring the explanation and the technique of that uniqueness that you're expressing, especially if you don't find any other notations of this. The next question is, when I receive messages, I can see everything clearly as they stream through my mind so fast. However, I'm unable at this time to use my words to convey them outwardly. What does this mean? It means that you're filthy. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm just like joking with this. But no, it's any time when you use the word that you, you're not able to get more clarity about something. <laughs> just as a joke, by the way. It just means that, yes, that the faculties in which you're using to perceive something thus far are still not clear or clean enough to give you a clear sight into it, which is perfect. It's normal. At least you're getting actually some kind of response. But to go on these cleanses, to do more breathing exercises, to clear out your lymphatic system, to clean your skin, right? Like you see your pores, your pores are dirty. Like there's a way for your entire body to breathe. Sometimes you only experience that when you go and see a, a good esthetician and they clean your face. And then you walk outside and you feel like your face is breathing because all your pores are unclogged. Dr. Kassar has a great video on how to clean the skin. And practicing those cleanses with anything that you can see yourself doing, also to the brother that talked about the black and the purple, the brother earlier about dream recall, all of those things get clearer when you clean, like clean the chakras, clean the skin. The skin is the, one of the biggest chakras. And, when you, and what you're doing is you're saying, I'm going to clean this to get more clarity there. Set the intentions. I'm cleaning my skin so that way I have more clarity with this. And it will respond. It will answer. But that's at times why... Some of the stuff we can't either do on cue, we're confused about what exactly is happening, but this is the, the real way of how you get that to become more clear. Okay, I've been affirming the all for years. This is the question. When we affirm the all, does it get us closer to understanding we are part of everyone and everything everywhere? I believe so. I believe that it's like a mantra. I believe that there's so much division going on around us. We must constantly keep at the forefront of our consciousness that we're all connected. Somebody can piss you off and you can forget about the connection, everything right then. So having that redundification going on within self and the reaffirmations that all is self does indeed bring you closer into the awareness of it and keep you out of those blind areas of the delusion where you feel like that that is not the case or that something is excluded from that. This next question here is, could you offer a practical way to transfer your consciousness to archetypical 
the, the archetypal energy that you want to be in. I think that we talked about that last week, so I'm not going to answer that question. Also, I'm still answering questions for last week, by the way. Another person says, what do you think about the work of Robert Seffer? Uh, interesting question, because I actually used to watch Robert's work for a bit because I, I found it interesting. I like anyone that actually goes on their own archaeological exploration. But I think like Red Ice, that many of these people are getting caught up in the racial divide. They're so busy trying to authenticate the history of their racial culture. And this could be, you know, let's say, quote unquote, black folks and white folks alike. So interested in trying to expunge who's first and those kind of things that it can begin to taint or cloud the message and actually bring untruths into the message. So that's my, um, you know, that's my take on it for somebody that's, that's my own opinion. Also, by the way, I'm entitled to my opinion, but I feel like the earlier works were much more like, okay, let's just explore this and see where it leads us. And then the latter works became, let's try to create an origin to this in being European. And I feel like even when, let's say, Alkibulanians, Kometans, melanin dominant people do that, it also does the same things in many ways. I've seen someone just go and stretch and reach for this authentication of that the melanin dominant species or the dark people created everything when truly it's beyond the colors. If you want to really go and find the creators, that is the biggest way not to is by lim limiting them to a certain skin color or even a certain kind of human shape or form because we find that the ancient ancestors don't actually even, they're, they're more like your genitalia. They're more like your organs. They're more closer to that than they are, what you would say is a, a com composite of the human body. So that's what I feel about uh, Robert's work and uh, the direction that it, it kind of took. And when you look at it, you'll see what I'm talking about. Next question here is, could you expand on the idea of secret covens, casting certain individuals using numerology and gematria to lasso people to spiritual possession, taking them out to pass entities to the new host? OK, and I could tell you personally that I get into less of this kind of thing these days, and it's only because I find it as having almost no value anymore, especially since we're going into 2020 here and it's time for us to stop looking into other people's situations and other people's lives and start paying attention to what's going on with self and realizing that all is self and that many people are not exposed to the same level of knowledge and awareness and even moral bearing that you are. Like even your great grandmother probably had little to no access to some of the mindful tools that we have today. So her frenzy about Jesus may be a direct result of that. But the build is for us to actually, since grandma's DNA is contained within us, now that we have access to all this stuff, to make that upgrade internally, to continuously take all of what we are as a collective forward or bring it into balance, right? Get the equations happening to where they're balanced and equal and even. That's what we want to do. That's why it becomes so hard for anybody to get out of this place, because when they start thinking about equal and even, they always have something that they don't feel equal to or they don't feel even with or that they're trying to put themselves ab uh, above or that they feel below. You see how that's all over the place? It's like the stars and the actors. Star and the actor does something and ah, oh, this star and the actor. Now that person is above you. OK. And then, oh, you know, this this person and, and all the things that they cause and they do. Now that person, I'm way better than them because I'm awoke. Now the person is below you. But truly, you're just you're messing your own stuff up. If it'd be better for you to sit in a room for a while to stop doing that, that would be the best for you. Rather than jumping onto a news channel, jumping onto the latest conspiracy channel and downloading more of this because we have so much of it. I've been in this 10 years, so I know the body of a of, of a conspiratorial knowledge on the Internet. And it helps the neophyte get fired up to make decisions. However, the long haul, not the, the, uh, the quarter horse, but the one that is running the whole race, finds out that that only has a certain amount of use. And now, instead of pointing the fingers at everybody else, one has to begin to focus on self. So let's talk about how this would work instead of in the secret covens with dark possessions and all that. Let's talk about how it would work in the realm of harmonics, like with your family. When you go and do the 
math or the ma'at with your family members and say, oh, okay, he's a six. Oh, wow, she's a four. And this is done by, by the way, for any of those that are just tuning in today, what I was just showing up here is basically uh, th this, numero this numerological uh, correspondence, which we call enneology and also joydish numerology. You will see here there's a number, okay? So Saturn is number eight. And that number actually is calculated so easy. It's actually the day of birth, not the whole date of birth, 10, 22, 78, that's my date of birth, but it's the 22, the actual day I was born on the 22nd, which makes me a four, okay? So you can do this number and calculation for yourself really easy. You just, six plus two, is, and I was born on the, the 21st, two plus one is three, so I'm a three, okay? So with a three, and of course we get into this knowledge at, in, at length and in depth at Ambassador training. We always welcome anybody on this call that wants to know more about this. You know, this is just an overview, but wants to know more about themselves. And most importantly, just knowing something is not always the, the biggest way to learn something. It's experiencing and being around others that are actually experiencing it. And that's what ambassador training is for in sovereignty mentorship. But as you see here, there's a number that corresponds to here. And we're going to get four and seven in here shortly. It's just four and seven don't correspond to the days of the week. Those actually correspond to the ecliptics of the moon, north node and south node, respectively. But here you will find there's a number. So if you're a number two, this means that you're a moon. OK, so if you're born on the 11th, if you're born on the second, this means that you're born on the uh, uh, on at your you're the archetype of the moon. And so these are the colors that strengthen you. These are the elements that strengthen you and get you electrochemically balanced. These are the herbs that correspond to this day and bring in that same energy of Monday. Obviously, that's the moon. That is our third eye chakra in this tense subconscious. Also, I will bring a note here to when we investigated these systems of correspondences deeply, and remember, this has been going on for years. This is not something we just found something and there it is. For years and years, we've been updating this system of correspondences, and now it is the most precise. What we found, though, is that the chakras don't actually align with the days of the week like that. They don't. You'll find lots of charts on the Internet that say they do, but that's because they're guessing. They're literally guessing. They'll literally say, well, because I think the energy and this is Capricorn, then it kind of would be. And it's just a guess. But the reason why you won't find those correspondences like that in ancient times is because the chakras themselves actually function within several numbers at times. Like even the, the root chakra is actually assigned to two different numbers. And it's just like that. So you won't find those direct correspondences with the chakras. But what we did was we put the highest level of the correspondence. You find the frequencies, you find the numbers, you find the ruling signs, you find the parts of the body like the anatomy. And you find the resonant numbers. These are, this means other numbers that resonate. Number one resonates, number seven resonates, and number four resonates. That means that people that are on those paths will be and have a tendency to be more harmonic, while the other numbers may be a bit more of a challenge. Now, we like challenges at times because they allow us to explore different aspects of self, but it is just a stage of awareness that there are people that will naturally appear as they're challenging you and that has to do a lot of times with their numerical disposition, okay? And so, again, the reason why this knowledge is so important because it brings in these answers to all of these questions and it brings in this level of connection with self. And I'll continue what I was saying is, um, so what happens then is, is, so we talk about bringing this into a, a practical setting. So what happens is if you start calculating what's going on around you, you will find also, because you, can, you always summarize the number. So if you have a number five, you have a number seven, you have a number three, you have a number two, and this is all in the same family. Do you guys spend all your time in the house together? You add all those numbers up, and then it equates to a number. And then you, that number it equates to is like the overall energy that the house would be most dynamic in. Okay, and that's how this power works. So if you know that that energy is not, propelling you in the direction that you want to go, then you find the direction that you want to go because everything that you can do under the sun is in these days of the week. So you say, well, I really want to bring in more of the Venus kind of energy, or I really want to have this house more like the guru kind of energy. Then you go to that particular number and you find those correspondences and you start doing that in the house. Burn some sage, burn some cypress, 
bring some silver plates in, get somebody to drink, some family members to drink some pearl powder. You see what I mean? So play these frequencies, lace these frequencies over the top of tracks, bring some water in and some fountains into the environment. Like this could be classified even as the feng shui. Start making sure that these areas are strengthened and clear. That's how you would change the resonance in an environment to equate to the results that you're looking for. So rather than thinking of this always being used to take spiritual possession and control people and all that kind of stuff, it's easier to see actually all these forces that we're titling demonic and all this kind of stuff and just call them opportunists. It's easier because you're, then you're not triggering certain things that actually have now start become labeled with certain energies and have energies surrounded by. When you say demon, it's like you're saying the word nigger, to be honest. Like on the spiritual plane, it's, it's like when you say that word, it's like that's how it makes other beings feel that you can't see when you say that. You know, that's just some word to the wise who can't see beyond anything that their eyes can see, right? That when you use certain words, you offend beings that are around you, just like you would use guttural words that offend people that are around us in our matrix, in our dimension. Because then you're just saying a word and you're trying to group everything into that one word. And that would be just like you trying to group a, a whole group of people into one word and say they're all like that. And then that word being somewhat now deemed derogatory. I want you to remember that. So it's better to say opportunist because what happens is, as I said in my podcast just recently, is that you have many beings around you. Almost every being is trying to find an opportunity, trying to find a way here. And who is going to limit that? And who is going to say what are the boundaries of that? That's the Saturnalian principle that actually tries to map out those boundaries and maps out those boundaries and keeps those rules going on. But what I'm saying is, is that those are, that's, that's what's happening in the reality is that you have even large families that are opportunists. But in order for that to work properly, they have to have a mathematician. That's why you got Kabbalists, right? Like they do all the numbers and this is the favorable day and name him this. To accomplish this endeavor, say these words. All that stuff is all just numerology. It's just gematria. Of course, it's going to be put on the pedestal because even sometimes for stuff to have power, it needs to be on a pedestal. And I talked about this last night in our ambassador training about, see, knowledge right now is given away so freely, people don't even really get the value of it. But back in the day, if you had to cross over a moat, defeat a dragon, and then it was there on top of a rock in the midst of lava... If you finally got the, the book, you will believe every single thing that it says in it. And you will hold it and protect it because of what you went through to get it. Now we're getting this high power of knowledge because it's really time draws nigh. We need it now. Those who are awake need this knowledge. But it doesn't come under this guise of the auspiciousness of what it really is about how hard it is to obtain it. It's just given to you right here on the Internet. And sometimes that's the drawback of all of this. But make that a benefit that you don't have to go through all those obstacles to get it you will go through obstacles if you may to master it to become strong in it but to receive it don't pass over its value just because you got it so easy and it's there on the website because to believe it or not these pages as google analytics tells us they don't get much feedback they never actually even on the original site got much feedback so there's still not thousands and thousands of people that are aware of this knowledge it's in the hundreds still and even less people who actually know it and are able to pop it off and even incorporate it into the way they build things in their lives, okay? And we're hitting that 1045 mark, so I'm going to see what exactly I can do on rapid fire. <laughs> Let's go and activate rapid fire mode. I need a little sound bite for that. Rapid fire! So again, utilizing that power and that numerology and the, and the beings that are around you with the archetypes in order to create and manifest the reality of the future that you're looking for and moving your mind away from all these covens and dark you know, Kardashian guilds and all this shit that actually is, even when you figure it all out, you've grown none and you've wasted all your time. Start firing this stuff into how it's going to actually benefit you. Next question is, what about sugar addiction? How do we overcome sugar cravings? Look at some of the earlier videos. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous to actually, uh, um, to, to still eat and consume white sugar, especially. How do you start dealing with it? Well, step it down. Start using honey. Start using agave. Some people say, oh, they're all the same. No, they're not. It's all glucose. It's not. Honey is not the same as white processed sugar. Stop it. Agave is not the same as white processed sugar. Stop. 
but again, too much of any of that is too much, too much sweetness, but get into the honeys, get into the agaves and get, get rid of the sugar and you'll already start seeing the benefit. Then you can start stepping it down from there if you're eating too much and consuming too much of the sugar. Question here is, can you explain the characteristic of someone whose blood is more mammalian than reptilian and give us some sources to learn more about our own? Okay, and I think that you can actually look at any National Geographic channel in order to get the answer to that question about mammalian rep, uh, uh, characteristics versus reptilian characteristics. Uh, so I won't answer that question. Like, it's, it's kind of like direct. <laughs> what do you think about the simulation theory and more particularly with the work of Thomas Campbell? I know that he worked with NASA and was involved in the Monroe Institute. I'm not familiar with Thomas Campbell's work, so I can't actually speak on it. The next question is, there is an, indeed a direct partnership between processed foods and mental programming. Yes, there is. Actually, there is. And that connection is overall just weakening the person's resolve and physical centers because then they're susceptible to anything. It's about getting them into a stage where they're more susceptible for programming. And so they're more grade over, grade over and they can't actually realize what's going on. Anytime you dilute something like that or dilute something like that, yes, it will be more susceptible to programming. And for sure, Popeye's chicken sandwiches have that going on inside of them. The next question here is how is one able to see the future seconds before it happens and what is deja vu? We talked about deja vu before. I'm going to give you one more resource in order to get also your questions answered because I know some people don't want to wait till next week. And also you may want to get to the thick of your questions at some point also and uh, need to make and traverse that process. So I'm going to show you how to actually get many of your questions answered by me. And let me go here really briefly. And then we're going to do our giveaway. So that way, those who came in today and knew that the runtime is about an hour and a half, they can move on. So what we're looking at here, let me turn this off. Okay, so now where we're at is we're on the site. And because we're out of beta, well, no, no, we're out, not out of beta. I wish we were out of beta. We're about to be out of beta. There's already a a ticket in basically with our developers to make this page live for everyone. So that should happen around next week if it hasn't happened already. And because this page is generally restricted to, um, it's restricted to beta users. Okay. But what this page is, is a technology we developed called real search. And what it does is it uses the captions that are accompanying most videos and it, it searched through those captions in order to find if I've answered that question. So let's take this. Uh, I don't even know if the computer knows how to really detect deja vu properly, but let's try it. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. Yeah, it's had a hard time. So what I would do is I would type in dream. Actually, you know what? Excuse me. Ah, okay. So notice how, and this is just to help, help you know, I, I'm only one person, right? And I'm always doing like tons of stuff because I'm about that life. Like I really know what we need and it just takes the time to build it. But this is one of the tools that we built for scenarios just like what we're dealing with right now where there's a lot of questions and there's only a little bit of time. But these questions are uniquely important to each person. Also, if you feel like at all that I'm downplaying your question, I'm really just joking. I love to play around a bit, especially to bring a light heart to uh, the matter sometimes because it can get pretty heavy and pretty deep. So what we've done is we've created this this uh, system called Real Search, and you access it. If you're a beta user, if you've always been a user of Secret Energy, then you have access to this page. If you're a new user, you may need to wait a week until the developers can process getting access to this page to everyone, which we've already put the order in. But you see how now I've typed in deja vu here in the search. And while it wasn't in that first video that was playing, because playing, there's always a video loaded, which would generally be the last video, it is saying that this term deja vu is in all of these recordings. And I've spoken on deja vu heavily. I've talked about how deja vu is this, the recall. I talked about how the album itself has a, has a more coarser line in it, the album of your existence, when there's a high frequency thing that takes place, sometimes trauma, sometimes happiness. And when we revisit that orbit again, we 
have this moment like, wow, I've been through this before, and that's deja vu. And that generally is it a time, uh, that generally is a time to reflect on the decision that is actually being made and see and make sure that you're making that decision in the best way possible. The, also, the easiest way to do that is to do the math, do the math, see exactly what numbers are surrounding the situation, the energies and that you're surrounding the situation with, maybe the number of the person, et cetera, and do the math and start seeing, okay, is this the right decision to make based on what the numbers are telling me? Because the numbers are always exact. That's why all the adepts and the occultists of the high level already know what's going on every single day, already know what's happening when they walk into different sessions. And they're also using things to manipulate what is going on in that environment to bring it to their favor. Like I would say to bring it in balance, but not all adepts use that use that power to bring things into balance. Some use it to bring things into their sway and to hold sway over it. So as you can see here, your question would be answered within these videos that are presented. If you went to a real search and you typed in deja vu and then you start going through it, even if I play this here now, if I click on this, now you see me on the couch right here and I'm actually talking about deja vu. And I just said that right there, deja vu. And then you'll be able to go through all that and see where the answer to those questions are. And because of that, uh, if anybody had actually questions today, because there is a stack up of questions still here that we won't be able to get to, and I'm going to do the giveaway now. Um, I just want to say that you can always use real search, especially as a member of the site, and actually get the answer to your questions straight away. So I trust that that assists. We'll be back next week on Sunday, same time, uh, to actually begin to bring this knowledge even more and also bring some activities around this knowledge. So let me look at the thread really briefly here and let me get the screen capture going on, a screen share for our giveaway for today. Man, it, the chat is just lit. I'm not sure if it's bringing in old stuff. It just won't stop. All right. Okay. Actually, I will answer one more question because I keep getting this question and folks are blowing up the support center about it and I wanted to definitely speak uh, to the situation. And this situation is actually about uh, Terrence Howard and um, the information that has been out right now on the internet that uh, Terrence Howard has been putting out about his own personal awakening. First and foremost, I wanted to say for any of us that actually go through an awakening process, the eureka moment, when it all starts clicking, I, I really have designed and I design consistently the way that I do to bring more recognition to those people. Meaning that I would love for if everybody, if everybody that woke up to get attention. <laughs> In fact, that was really one of the sole driving reasons why we developed the resistance 10 years ago was because when I had my awakening, I didn't really find really any support. I didn't find like people who were also simultaneously having that kind of awakening. I found a lot of watered down stuff from Mount Shasta. I found a lot of Masonic works. I found a lot of OTO Golden Dawn stuff. But personally, I didn't I wasn't able to accept access, you know, things that I felt were really tied into my awakening personally. Also, while there were some out there that were delivering messages, I found them virtually untouchable, meaning that I could not reach them or get in contact with them. This is including like your Jordan Maxwell's and uh, some of the pioneers even of the messages that we're delivering today that they weren't really accessible. Like even right now, you can talk to me like you would, you know, you can send a message here. I'm going to answer your question. You know, there's ways to interact. You can join ambassador training like we're in there live at least two to three times a week. So that to me is what is the upgrade from the old way. So to speak directly to the question, first of all, what I like to see is I do like to see that if you're regurgitating somebody else's stuff, that you at least say something about them. Like, A, you know, I got this information or I came into this awareness because I read or I spoke with, because what that does is it doesn't allow everybody to believe that you just came into all this knowledge and information. Because when you do that, to be honest, like you can know the difference between when as an adept, especially, or anybody who's even been looking at conscious information for years and years and years, you know whose information is whose. You know when someone's coming up and on some new stuff. Like when I started working with the code of the matrix, when I put the code of the matrix out and I started talking about the words, the words being backwards, everybody was looking at me like I was crazy. 
that all the word weak means weak, time men means men's men means small, like sec means, you know, divide, all this stuff, you know, and I start breaking down all these different words and showing that this stuff's got a whole nother meaning to it. And we haven't considered that. That I felt was, you know, beyond the, the etymology works that came before me, I felt that it was a very unique insight to how to start working with these words in the 20th century to get them to reveal a story to us. And I've always used that template and I use it to this very day in order to break down certain things for me so I can see the connection. And it's become very instrumental to those who are using that technique of dissecting and utilize, dissecting the, the language and utilizing the code of the matrix as a resource on how to do that. Okay. So that means that when someone comes behind me, like a few people did and actually start repeating that same thing verbatim, and then act like that that's their information, eh, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't look as good. You know what I mean? It's, so, it's cool, I guess, because the information doesn't belong to anybody. It needs to be spread. We all were divinely inspired by it. But it's always great to let people know where the source is of the information that you're getting. So that way they can, what you, did, what you omitted or what you don't still understand, they can go further and actually understand more about that. And in this case, I feel like personally that Terrence McKenna's work is highly inspired by Daniel Winter. Probably less inspired by Stan Tenen, but Stan Tenen is also the, one of the pioneers of centripetal, centrifugal, conjugate, wave conjugate, waveforms, trifects, and, 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 uh, or, or, or tri-based tri geometry, all these kind of stuff, implosion, bliss, all of that stuff, that's all Daniel Winter's stuff. And so to be honest, when I'm hearing him talking, and the other guy that's always in the background who never reveals himself yet, that's all I'm really hearing. I'm hearing Dan stuff. And it's great that Terrence has, has, has started being able to understand those scientific terms and spit that lingo, but to bring it out like it's exclusive to him and that he's actually just become aware of this only by himself, I think that I'm looking for more recordings to wear. And I'm not saying any, I don't want to say anything negative or positive about people. I'm just observing. Because I'm also watching this whole Kanye West thing and, and his whole thing. And I also know there's been a change of guard. Remember, we went through just a change of guard. So your spiritual leaders that you're going to be seeing here, even the commercial ones, are going to ship up on, they're going to shift their skin tones in a minute. But the same deceptions are still there at times. So we just have to always be aware of, okay, what's really happening with energy and what is really being said. Now, also, I would just speak to, again, this knowledge about, Bliss, implosion, wave forms, conjugate, centripetal, centrifugal, centrifugal, all those, that knowledge, that knowledge in itself will fly over the head of most that are not connoisseurs of the energetic body. Okay, meaning that even Daniel Winter's work, which is paramount, you know, the heart, heart, heart's ring. And all the different things that he's taught, he even develop applications for this. He's even got spouts that you put on your drain for this. Has still, in retrospect, been not used, not understood or understood. Like there's small groups that know about it. There's even small groups in Europe, especially that practice with it and do the breathing techniques and things together. But it confuses a lot of people is what I'm saying. And so... What I'm also looking for is I'm looking for since it's 2020 now and we just came off of 10 years, if not 20 years of massive levels of data, 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 data. I want to see some of the million dollars used towards application. I would like to actually challenge Terrence Howard to use these millions of dollars, which I would assume that he has with all these movies that he's made, to actually create the first school online for conscious children and super, for super, to produce super conscious children and to also to bring Daniel Winter in to assist with doing that because he's got so many tools and so much bearing and so much support around that. And I would like to see that flourish. So that's my personal take and opinion on what I see going on because I, I know the knowledge. I know what he's saying and I know the origins. I know that that knowledge in itself doesn't just come to you after you smoke some DMT or you take an ayahuasca journey. You need to read the work. And I suspect that the guy that's always talking in the background, I guess the name is Chris or whatever, that he probably put Daniel Winter or excuse me, Terrence Howard onto Daniel Winter's work because he's, he's the only one that uses those words and it's that type of geometry and every single thing matches. And so that, that's what I feel about it. So I just wanted to give my opinion and stop emailing me about it. 
Some people say you need to reach out to Terrence Howard. For me to get in touch with Terrence Howard would be like me trying to get in touch with Jay-Z. Okay, that's another thing. It's like just because I have a, a YouTube channel that has now got 111,000 people on it after 10 years, reaching out to these people is very similar to like if you tried to go and call Lil Wayne right now. It's going to be pretty much impossible for you to get a hold of him. So don't ask me to go and find Terrence Howard because I don't have that ability. I'm sure maybe even somebody on this line may have that that ability, but I don't. I can't call these stars and actors be like, yo, it's Sev. What's good? These people don't call me. These people have not reached out to me, have talked to me in 10 years. 10 years. I have not got an invitation to no radio shows or nothing that you see as mainstream. I'm they, they are either oblivious to what I'm doing, which is pretty much impossible, or it's something about what I'm doing that they don't like. And so that's just the, the reality of this. So I, I trust that as we go forward, as we align ourselves more in the truth, especially the reason why we design a platform is when we're all together as a collective. First of all, somebody's got to know and somebody would then bring him into this awareness of things. But even more important, why is everybody waiting on one person to do something? And why when a star or an actor or somebody that we feel like is like higher does something that somebody that has been doing this all their life has done, like Daniel Winter, why do we still have that thing where we're like, ah, oh, yes, the whole world's going to be saved because Johnny Depp now has spit some conscious words. And it's just like, I feel like that there's a, there's a phobia or a program structure that is going on within that because I would like to really see the people who are, have been by proof and by action, the pioneers of this kind of knowledge, especially when it comes to geometry and fractals and all that, I would like to see us just as excited about those people's next work and representing and supporting them and seeing them, you know, because that's what support really is. You see what I mean? And so that's that's my take on it. So let's do a giveaway. And let me see here really quick. Here we go. All right, so we're going to boot this thing up. And uh, here it is right here. And also, I, I do also want to repeat something I said a while ago, which was about maybe they should join us. You know, somebody was saying something about that. They should join us. And I will speak at that directly. You cannot join anything because we're already together. So my ambitions are not anymore getting everybody, even in Hollywood, to listen to this message and become consciousness so they can join us. We're already all together. I want to see others going into action and actually defeating what I do feel like are the codes that the opportunists have put into this reality with us not creating anything. Like we, we don't have, we have few stores, we have few items, metaphysical items and products that we can use that are bona fide to work. So there's a lot of actual creation that we need to do. Somebody's saying that the, the coupon code Super Sunday is not working out well. We'll go ahead and check that when we come back in. and uh, get that working just in case you're trying that now. So probably in five, 10 minutes, it'll be working as we leave off the conversation. So today we're gonna roll it. And our first giveaway is actually for a bottle of monatomic gold. So let's show that here. So you know what you're getting. Let's see if I can find it here on just on Google. Oh, actually I know that direct URL. All right. Actually, you know what? I did that wrong. Mm. Also, okay, so right now we're going to do this giveaway, and we're giving away a bottle of super deform nuclear hybrids, also known as monatomics. And we're going to more specifically give away a bottle of monatomic gold. And for those who want to learn more about monatomic gold, you can visit store.secretenergy.com forward slash Ormus. I'll send that now in the chat. Bam. Wow. 
I tried to throttle the chat. I guess this slow motion mode is on, but it is not working. Okay, so I just sent in uh, that. Also, there is a coupon code for today. It's called Super Sunday. Super Sunday gives you 30% off all courses, and it also gives you 30% off She Legit. And I'm about to add, after the conversation, 30% off Monatomics, just in case you wanted to explore that, go on that journey. And let me just explain a little bit about why I'm correcting these codes and adding this extra uh, item to it, exactly what Monatomics are really about. So let's say, for instance, it's all about the particle size now, that basically your entire, the layering of your physical, mental, and spiritual body is all about the membranes, okay? The membranes are generally the, the layers that actually surround or separate even one field from the next. So you can see it like, a, like an onion. And each time another ring in the onion begins, you have a little layer there or a membrane. And what that does is generally protect that space from things from the other space going inside of it. Now, this also happens metaphysically. In order to be able to get into certain spaces, you actually have to be able to become smaller so you can pass through the hole, okay? So even like we talked about before, is that it's gotta be in seed form before it passes through the zero or the hole. Like it can't come in as a grown up, as in, a, as in a, uh, it can't come in as the big thing. It just can't fit. So it's gotta go down into seed form. And then when it goes into seed form, then it passes through. So too, the same thing is with these nutrients and these vitamins and these minerals that we're putting in our body. That if the particles are too big, then they can only get to a certain part of the body. And then a gentleman by the name of Hudson had discovered in the laboratory another element, a fifth state of matter, sometimes called monatomics. And in this fifth state of matter, the particle was so small that it even could pass through not only the cellular level of the body, but also into the fields that we refer to as the time fields. Okay, now give me just a quick moment. I'm looking at this. All right. All right. And I'm now adding to this monatomics. So this means this coupon code that we're talking about, which is called Clear Sunday, you will now also have 30% off monatomics for today. Fixed product discount. And uh, I know, Sean, you had uh, asked about this code, and it seems like it's activated properly. That's Clear Sunday, C-L-E-A-R-S-U-N-D-A-Y. Give me one quick second, everyone. I just want to make sure that this is activated properly. And also, we have a little bit of slight slowdown today, and it's because we did a massive upgrade, so we had to clear all of our cache. Um, and that basically means that all of the stored settings of the site need to be reloaded into the browser, so this could take a little bit of time. So we may have just a little bit of slowdown on the site today. If you're experiencing that, just know that that's what that's directly related to. And that coupon is upgrading. So I'll let it do that and uh, we'll see. And if it doesn't work for you, just hit us down in support and we'll troubleshoot it further. It should be activated. Things should actually work properly. And uh, let me see. Okay, I see. Excuse me. I just, uh, oh, that, that's fine. I'll just leave it like that. So let's roll it. So right now, we're giving a bottle away of Monatomic Gold Ormus, and we're going to hit our Nightbot giveaway right here. So how this works is it takes everybody in here, which right now it says that we have over 113 users. Uh, also remember that when you see that view count, that could be people jumping in and jumping out of the site. So that doesn't always reflect uh, how many people are actually listening to the live stream. So we're going to go ahead and roll this right now. We're considering all the regular people, the supporters, the mo uh, not the moderators, you know, because I think that could be acute. We could be accused of cheating. <laughs> so we have the regular we have the regulars, we have the supporters and we have the users. 
we have our active users and we're not going to use any keywords and we're about to roll it right now. So we're ready and here it goes. Boom. Oh my goodness. Charles Cartwright. He just got himself a bottle of monatomics. Monatomic gold. I actually know Charles, so I know that I can be able to deliver this to him. Charles is actually an ambassador, so I guess he's just got it going on with the luck today. So congratulations, Charles. You've now won a bottle of monatomic gold. We'll be getting that to you. If you can uh, hit us up on the bottom of the site, bottom right-hand corner, and let us know what address you would like us to ship that to, we can get that to you right away. All right? So we're going to keep this going. We're going to give out now... A university course. This is either semester one or semester two. You can also award this course to anyone you wish, meaning that when you hit us up, you can just let us know, hey, I won the course, but I want it to go to this person and you give us their email address and their name, etc. And then we'll get them enrolled. So that's what's going on uh, with how you would redeem that. So let's roll this thing again. Is everybody ready? Let me see here. Whew, still rolling in there. Okay, so let me do it again. Here we go. Here we go. Roll it. All right. So same old me has now received a complete semester, whether it's semester one or semester two of the university wholeness brother or sister that you've actually been able to receive that. Let me see if I can click on the profile so that we have your profile here. So this is your profile. This is your avatar. That is who won today's giveaway. So tomorrow we'll be back in here again. Oh, also, if you contact us, the bottom right-hand corner of the site, we will be able to get you signed up. Or if you want to give this away to a friend, then you can do so and we can get them signed up. I want to say wholeness and balance vibrations to everybody. I wanted to also let everyone know that we're doing our best to bring in this awareness to synthesize the awareness, to get us into things that we can use now in our lives. That's the big challenge to me. Like I got, there's new folks coming. They're coming already. You know, they start up new YouTube channels and it's conspiracy, conspiracy. And I get it. I totally get it. I can't speak against it because that's where I started. But I can only encourage as somebody who's already been through it for all those that are coming in, especially if you want to really make an impact, you want to even save more time because, you know, time is of the essence. You know, I'm 10 years older than when I first began this. I still look the same. I feel the same. But the reality is, is that we need to build more. And being able to build this stuff, that's why I'm starting this co-creation with the new secret energy, because when we start as, as things come online, we get our chats, our geo chats, you know, people that are in your area that are that are working on their consciousness. You got support that's lit. You jump in. You can even become a soul coach. You join ambassador training. Start learning more about etiology. These are things that you can even do now. Learn more about etiology. Hit those, that cosmic energy page. Start getting yourself aligned. Know that knowledge. Be able to pop that knowledge. You, any, you'll be able to hang with any adept in the paint. This reality will speak to you. It will show you how everything is connected and it works. You just need that blueprint and that template. When it even comes to predicting the future, when it comes to creating things perfectly, you will have all those components. So it's just important to remember that you got to start somewhere, though. Start with remembering these things. Get into that cosmic energy and then challenge yourself to instead of just sounding smart and saying smart things, even if you have to be quiet to build something, start building something, because those are the things that our children, the neophytes and initiates that are coming in. And even the people who haven't yet become aware of themselves, those are the things that they'll actually need. We see all these industries out here. They create 50 different types of chairs, two, 3,000 different types of chairs, different types of cars, you know, all these different products that are out here, but very little exposure and experience into true spiritual tools. Let's do that. Let's be a part of that change. So I want to definitely say thank you to everyone. We'll go ahead and adjourn from now. Thank you so much also to those moderators that came in to moderate the conversation today, holding the space. Again, we want to invite anyone here that is looking for that, that intensive, that really needs that mentorship to join Ambassador Training, send in love, balance also to our ancestors who have opened up this space. And then also in harmony, I definitely want to say if there's anything that I said today that is seeming uh, like it's bringing some kind of dissension. That was not my intention. 
I always want to just be very clear, though. I don't want to sell you some hoax or not speak truthfully about something. I always want to be as clear and as balanced as possible because that's what I strive to do in my life. And I trust that others that are around me that are also taking lead from what I'm doing will do the same. Thank you so much.